Imagine you're a clinical trialist investigating the use of a novel drug to cure androgenic alopecia. You enrolled nearly 6,000 participants and have completed the final study visit. But when you begin to analyze your results, you discover some missing data. You start pulling out your own hair as you rack your brain for what to do next. In a perfect trial, you would gather 100% of the data you set out to collect. Participants would attend every study visit. Lab samples would always be processed correctly. Questionnaires would be completed in full, and so on. Reality is messier. Participants move away or skip some visits. Instruments malfunction. Questions are left blank. Hey, stuff happens. The result? Incomplete or missing data. You might think that if the amount of data missing is small and the sample size large, it may be possible to simply discard cases with missing data. After all, what are a few data points out of hundreds or thousands? But what if data are missing for a reason? What if the participants who stop taking the study drug or who don't show up at a study visit share something in common? In that case, ignoring incomplete data is likely to introduce bias into your results. So what's an investigator to do? Well, first, consider the mechanism of the missing data. The mechanism is known as missing completely at random, when the likelihood of missing data has no relationship to other variables. For example, in this study, participants upload photos into an app from which measurements are taken, and a handful of patients drop and break their phones so they can't upload photos. That scenario is equally likely to happen to any participant, regardless of hair growth. So we consider the data to be missing completely at random. The mechanism is deemed to be missing at random when the probability of missing data is related to some other known variable. For example, despite your best efforts, some older participants find the smartphone study app hard to use and have difficulty uploading photos of their hair growth. In that case, the probability of missing data, hair growth, is related to the patient's age, but unlikely related to actual hair growth. Finally, the mechanism is known as missing not at random if the probability of missing data depends on the actual values of the missing data. For example, patients whose hair grew back quickly while taking the study drug feel a surge of confidence. They head out on the town and forget about the study altogether, so they don't report hair growth. In that case, whether or not someone reports the outcome, hair growth is related to the outcome itself. With these categories in mind, you've now looked at your data, identified areas of missingness, and carefully considered why it might be missing in each instance. So what do you do about it? Well, it depends. There are many statistical approaches to handle missing data. Which one you choose will depend on many factors, including the type of missing data. Mind blown yet? We feel you. The point is, missing data happens. Deep breaths, don't tear your hair out.